and let's uh, let's dig in. So as usual, I've got oh so many fun and wonderful things for you, um, and we're gonna just run through the list today. If there's something that you both think is too easy, I'll skip it. If there's something you want more of, let me know, and I'll repeat it. I'll add some stuff to it. So we're going to start with harmonic intervals. Does that sound like a plan? All right. So you know how it works. It's going to be intervals under an octave, and you just you'll jot down the majors and minors. I'll play each one twice, and then afterwards I'll open up the screen and we'll see uh, what we got right and what we got wrong. Let's begin right now. So let's start. Oh, why didn't you play? Okay, let's try it again. And again. Second one. One more time. Third one. Let's do that one again. Fourth. <laughs> second time for second time for that one. Fifth. We'll do that one again. Another interval. Let's do that one again. Oh gosh, another interval. Again.
Still another interval. Let's do that one again. Another one. Oh, sorry. Let's hear it again. And the last interval. And let's hear that one again. All right, let's check out the answers and see how we did. As usual, just give me some heads up on how you did. If you want to go on to the next thing or if you want to practice more of this, that kind of answer. And here we are. So the first interval is a perfect fourth. I'll play them as I talk about them so you can hear them in case you missed one. Um, then a major third. Perfect fifth. Minor sixth. By the way, I think the other one I said so the third was the sixth, major sixth. Now a minor third. Minor sixth. Major third. Major second. Minor third. Let me see what's next. I can't see it. Minor second. Okay, guys, you need to tell me live or... Oops, sorry. Or we can put the hints in chat. Tell me live or put it in chat. Tell me how you did. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we're going to move on. Was it very, very difficult, or was it um, just to miss a couple because we missed some? Give me some hints so I can practice, you know, for the future. All right, that's the message is coming back. So well, let's just run through the scales once. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not bad at all. Not bad at all. Just did an inversion. Did, a, did an inversion. That's so easy to make that mistake. And 
Sometimes I only take off half credit for that because that shows you actually heard the right interval. Um, good. Okay. Let's do scales unless you guys want to skip scales. What do you think? Scales? Give me a thumbs up if you like just run them. I'm only going to play each one once. Okay. Scales it is. Now, remember, we've added a couple scales to this, and I can't remember which ones we added because I did this yesterday. But we've got, I think, the Dorian mode now. Remember, so Dorian mode, um, I, I'll just play the example here. We have a minor mode. Um, let's go back to a share of the sound. Hold on. So we have the minor mode. And the only difference if we go to Dorian, we start with the same four minor notes, but then the sixth degree is a, is a half step higher. So Dorian sounds like this. So it sounds like it's going to go to melodic minor, and then it doesn't. It has that sixth degree that's raised, but the seventh is low. So remember, we're going to have Mixolydians and Dorians and otherwise major and the three minors. We've done this a lot before, so I'll play each scale only once. Let's just see how good we are. Scale number one. Scale number two. Guys, if you need them twice, shout that out loud. Otherwise, I'm still going to play them once. So shout to me if you need them twice. All right, next scale. And the next scale. Another scale. And another. And the last scale. All right, let's look at the answers. I'll play them as we do the answers. So we opened, here we go, with a Dorian mode. It starts in minor, but then this top part is also minor, it turns out, but that's what makes it Dorian. Instead of being an E flat like you expect in G minor, it's an E natural, but that goes right back to the key. So it's just the raised six. Let's listen. Yeah, so it's either a, you know, we either raised the six compared to natural minor or we flatted the seventh compared to um, melodic minor. And then the next one is mixolydian. It's major to the last note. The leading tone is flatted.
And then we have, what is this thing here? Ah, uh, we'll find out. Let's play it. Um, and it sounds like a natural minor to me, and it is. Then we have... major which needs no explanation uh, then we have after that whoops now we have a melodic it's a harmonic minor harmonic minor this one is melodic minor It's got the major on top, minor at the bottom. It's a melodic minor. And then the last one is also natural minor. All right. Again, you know the rules. Throw me some stuff in chat. Okay, good. All right. So we've kind of flipped on who needs the practice. The big thing is just remember the definitions. So if you know what major and minor sounds like, mixolydian just doesn't have a leading tone. It's major without a leading tone. And Dorian is minor with the sixth degree raised. So you can compare it to those things. And it eventually gets pretty good, but it's a definition thing. You want to have clear in your head because one note's the giveaway. You listen to the scale and you hear the one note and you say, oh, that's the giveaway. So we'll practice that a little more next time. Um, but we're not, we're not terrible. Um, I don't, so we'll practice a little bit more of that later. All right, let's do some rhythm. So remember, we've added 16th notes to our rhythm. So let's see what happens. We're going to start in 4-4. Do I have that share done correctly? Yes. We're starting 4-4, but we're going to have 16th notes. So let me just play the first measure so I know what my tempo is. Hold on a second. Okay. So 1, 2, 3. So the 16ths are 1 E and a, right? 1 E and a, 2 E and a. Eighth notes are 1 and 2 and. And you might get a one and a two and a three. That's so eighths and sixteenths combined. So those are our rhythms. I'll play each one. Eh, I'll play it three times. There's a lot of notes. Okay? Rhythm number one. Here we go. Four, four time. A second time, it sounds like this. And the third time, it sounds like this. Let's do a second one. Still in 4-4, still two measures long. Here's the first time round.
Let's hear that one again. And the third time. Okay, now we're moving to three, four time. Three, four time is three measures long, but the same kinds of rhythms. Okay, we're set up. First time round. Let's do that one again. And the third, third time through. Our last rhythm is in six eight time, and it's four measures long. So set up your set up your grid for that. The tempo is a little different on this. So let me play the first measure so we feel the tempo. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, da, 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 ready, go.
Second time through. One more time. Okay, let's check our answers. So the first one is the pattern of four sixteenths or two eighths. We also have that ba 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 ba. So that's quarter two eighths. Uh, sorry, eighth and two sixteenths. So those were our three patterns, and they just sort of alternate, and it sounds like this. We see the patterns. So if you group, group them in notes, just like the beams do, four, two, four, and then this odd one, and then two and four. So we just group, group them in beats. The second one's a little harder because we still have the bop, 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 which we've heard, but we've thrown in a syncopation in there. The bop, ba ba ba. So that syncopation's in there, and that throws the thing off a little bit. It sounds like this. The three four has one trick in it. It starts with that ba ba ba, and then the two eights and the four sixteenths, all stuff we've heard. But then we do a reverse with the ba ba ba, and then we reverse that to ba ba ba. And we haven't actually practiced that before, but I wanted to see if we could pick it up. So ba 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 ba. This one's the reverse of this one. Let's give it a listen. And then the six eight just starts with the three eighth notes and quarter three eighths. That one time I threw the two sixteenths in the middle from ba 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 to ya ba 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 ba, but otherwise it's just eighth notes and dotted quarters. It sounds like this. So let me know how you did, guys. Can I see the three, four, one again, please? Of course you can. Yeah. Oops. I don't know why that's a play. Hold on a second. Three, four, one is there. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting that the three four is harder than the four four, even though they're the same kind of rhythm patterns. But we're so used to that four four straightness, the one ba ba ba, you know. That when we take a beat away from the measure, it gets confusing. The accent falls on a different place. And I think we need to practice that. It's interesting how hard rhythm can sometimes be. Um, I'm waiting for one more message. Okay. Wait for just one more message. Yeah. Okay. So as expected... So I've got a couple things to do, but I think we're going to go to our two-part harmony before we do the other stuff because that's really the most fun and the most challenging. So we're going to hear some chords in a minute, but I've got two two-parts for you. Uh, 
they're both in A major. Is that correct? Yes, they're both in A major. So the first one, let me get this share set up now so I don't forget to do it later. Okay, so the first one is in 3-4. It starts right on the downbeat. The soprano has a C sharp near the top of the staff. The bass has an A near the top of the staff, of the bass clef staff. It's four measures long, three, four time. I'll let you get set up. All right, so remember the soprano starts on a C sharp. I'm going to play it three times for the soprano, then three times for the bass. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to play it a second time. Just so you guys notice, we're not stop at ending on the last note. It's not the same as the first note, nor is it the same as tonic. So we are going to a half cadence, and that may affect both your soprano and your bass. But it's a thing to listen for. So let's start it again. Soprano on a C sharp. And let's do it the third time. All right. Let's try it again, this time with emphasizing the bass, which starts on an A at the top of the bass clef staff. Second time.
and the last time. All right, let's look at the answer to that one. Then I've got another two-part one for you because that's what needs the most practice, I think. It combines everything. So if we look at the soprano, it's just it starts on mi, re, do. So that's our key. And it just stays stepwise up till here. But that B is the same as the down as the first B of the bar. So we can hear that. This leap's a little tricky. So fourth, we might be able to pick it up that way, or we could pick it up by going do mi so. But the other way is once you know it's a half cadence, you know you're not ending on an A, so you can pretty much guess that's a B, and then you know it's stepwise. You can go backwards to figure it out too. So that's the soprano. That seems doable to me. Now, the bass is a little trickier, but the most common half cadence is going to be a five chord. And so that E bass with a B top, that makes a lot of sense. You're kind of expecting that. So that's kind of a giveaway. We know we're starting on tonic. So we go down, we have this leap, and we have to hear that leap. That's a little tricky unless you look at your soprano and realize it's consonant. So it's, that's a, you can hear that that's a sixth if you're lucky. But if you get that fourth, then we're down, and then it's a leap again. And that's a, this, these three notes are a little hard to hear. But once we get to the end, we can hear that because we know where we're ending. It's a little hard. So if we play them together, you can see them and see how you do. Let's just even up the sound. Here we go. And another giveaway is that octave right there. That's a place that you could find if you know the top note. If you hear the octave, you can find the bottom note. So that's we're trying to hear both directions at once. Very hard to do, but sometimes we can make that happen if we are clever and practiced and lucky. So I'm going to do the next one before I get the message from you because I'm doing it anyway. So let's just go straight on and do another one while we have time. Two-part is always fun. And this one's a little different, not a lot different, but a little. And that's because it starts with a pickup. We're in 4-4 four, four time. But instead of starting on the downbeat, we're starting on the fourth beat. So it's a pickup note. In the soprano, it's two eighth notes. And in the bass, the pickup is a quarter. But they're both on the fourth beat. Davio, these aren't the ones I did with you last time, are they? I don't think so. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I rewrote them yesterday, but still they remembered we did a pickup note last time. So I just wanted to make sure that I didn't just copy and paste something because that would be sad. Okay, so it's in 4-4 four, four time. You have a pickup. Again, the pickup in the soprano is two eighth notes, and then you have two measures after that. The pickup in the bass is lined up with it. It's just a quarter note. So it takes the same time as the two eighths. So, so both of them are on the fourth beat. And then the bass has two measures. So it's two measures plus a pickup. We're still in A major. This time the soprano starts on the A in the middle of the staff. And the bassoon starts on the C sharp at the top of the bass clef staff in the middle C position. And let's do it. Let's have some fun with it. All right. Here we go. First time.
Let's do it again. And the third time. Before I play the bass for you, you probably did hear that that's also a half cadence, but I will tell you that the bass is a surprise, so don't use the half cadence to help you with the bass. I'll explain the bass when we get there. Um, sometimes things are not what we expect, but let's start on a C sharp. Here we go with the bass part. Let's do it again. And one last time. Okie dokie. There's the answer. As you look it over, the only thing tricky about the soprano is there's eighths and quarters. The rhythm can be a little tricky if, if we're so focused on the pitch, but otherwise everything scales. So just repeated note there down the scale. And it does end on some kind of half cadence. We've heard that before. But the bass, now the bass starts with just going mid, um, me do, me do, so me do. It's got a half note, which is a little confusing, and a dotted quarter, which is a little confusing. We've seen those rhythms before, but that dotted quarter eighth seems to get us, but we've got the metronome in the top part. One, two, three. One, two, and three. So that's a help if we could hear both parts at once. This ending looks a little weird. We're expecting half canes an E major chord, you expect an E in the bass, but we had a D. So it's either an E7, which is still a 5-7, or it could even be a 7 chord. You know, half cadences, it's got a dominant function of some sort, but we expect an E, and it's a step lower, it's a D, and that could throw you off if you're not careful. But if you hear that as tonic and that's a scale going up, it takes you to the right note. Then you have to realize, okay, it's going to resolve back down to the C sharp on the next beat. It still makes sense. So sometimes our theory knowledge is useful, but sometimes it adds a little confusion. So you just have to be aware that that's an inversion of something. Okay, share me your successes and your failures. Share me everything. I'll find my, my chat.
Yeah, so Leslie, if you don't mind me sharing, so share, shout at me if you don't want me to share what you just said. Um, Leslie did very well, but she said she's slow at it. And by the way, it's you're going to be slow till you've done it a thousand times, and then you get a little faster. And then the next thousand, you get faster. Now, if you do it regularly, if it's something that you need to do for, you, for what you do, you eventually get quite fast and quite good at it. But it's an incremental process. And so if you're doing it, but you're slow at it, well, you're doing fine. Uh, that's great. It's if you can't hear it at all that we have to really start practicing. But again, these are lifetime struggles or, or studies. And uh, don't expect to be quick right now unless you were bored with your perfect pitch or something. And then the notes just sort of speak to you. But uh, that's great. Okay. Yes. And Davio, if you don't mind me sharing, um, with you. So what Daviel was saying is that um, she was able to get that D because she heard the D to the B was a third. So this is the ending of the second episode, the second one where you have the, the two notes. She heard the B to D was a third. It's a half note, so you have some time to actually listen. But this is why we practice the melodic intervals as well as harmonic because we want to be able to listen up and down but it's really hard when you're listening for a melody to also remember to listen up and down and hear those intervals it's hard to do but if we can do that and practice it it's amazing how we can suddenly say oh things become clear it becomes obvious um, but it's a very it's kind of like you know the rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time or it's hard to do the two things at once, but if you practice and stretch your mind to do it, it eventually becomes second nature, but it's a eventually. Uh, so that's great. That's great. So we'll continue. I think what we'll do next time is we'll add a third voice to it and really confuse the matter. We'll start doing some third three voice um, dictation. It's not harder. There's just more notes. So it's a little more confusing to the brain, but you know, you'll get it. So, guys, very good. It was great to see you or hear you as always. Tomorrow we go back to regular theory. So, you guys, have a great evening and bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome.